Time to get more clients, which means you need to overcome client objections in recruiting. So check out this video right now. We're gonna go over some tips and tricks to make you more money. Welcome to The Millionaire Recruiter. I'm Brianna Rooney, your Millionaire Recruiter. If you've not seen this channel before, it's all about up in your game in the recruiting industry and, well, making you the next Millionaire Recruiter, right? Okay, so if you get this client on the hook, you're excited, you had the call, and then now they don't wanna work with you, what are you gonna do? Or if you're doing all of this biz dev reach out and you're even using that chat GPT feature that I told you, the weeks before. Check out that video if you have not. Um, but they're still saying, thanks, no thanks. Uh, we've got plenty of help, um, you know, whatever their objections is. How do you combat that? How do you overcome it? How can you make these your clients? Well, let's really think about what are the most common objections. First and foremost, I think just too expensive. We're too expensive. We have an internal team. Our budgets were cut, stuff like that. Um, one that I think personally is probably the most common is they don't know you. How can they trust you? You know, you weren't a referral. You're just some person off the streets. Uh, quality. They don't know your quality. If they don't know you, they don't know what you think is going to be a fit, which then means that maybe they're afraid the timing is going to be off. It's going to, they're going to, you're going to take too long to get to know them. You're not going to understand their quality. Um, and then also I think control. That's another objection. So what are we talking about with control? Well, there's a lot of companies who like to own their process, do this process that they've done the last five years, and that's it. Um, that they only like the inbound candidates or they like referrals, you know? So there's a lot of issues when it comes to control. Control is an interesting little beast. Um, so you do have to know what objections. And throughout the years, what I think is really great, especially when you're in that biz dev mode, is you should have a doc of all of those objections. So anytime someone has said no, we need to know why. And here's the thing, please don't tell me, well, they just said no thank you, or unsubscribe, or, or we have enough help. What does that mean? That means that you actually weren't persistent enough. The most common thing in sales and definitely in recruiting is the person on the other side, you, didn't dig that you took no for an answer. No is never an answer. I want at least a maybe, okay? So you have to think, how am I making money off of every single interaction? Well, it's being very persistent. It's actually understanding the no, understanding the not right now, understanding the, my internal team's got it, yet you see that there's 150 postings, okay? So it's digging. Lots of times, think about it. If people are busy, lots of times they're not reading the whole message, that's my thing, okay? They're not fully reading it. Um, and then they're responding too quickly or they're just saying, thanks, no thanks, thanks, no thanks, thanks, no thanks, you know? Um, so you gotta dig. Now you have to listen while you're digging, okay? Um, please be that active listener in recruiting, actually I think in life, <laughs> but in recruiting, it's just so crucial to completely absorb and listen to understand instead of listen to respond. I talk about that a lot in the videos. So um, you, you wanna hear what the problem is. Or what I like to do is say, hey, you're not interested. Even if they said just thanks, no thanks, you're probably thinking, where do we go from there? Will you start the conversation up again? You start asking questions. That's the only way to keep the door open. So I'm gonna say, oh, great. So are you ahead of your hiring goals this year? The response is no. Okay, so are your is your internal team handling every single role for you? No, or you could say, hey, are there any, what, is your, what are your most important roles right now? What roles for your organization are gonna move the needle the most? So all of those things are really thought provoking. So depending on what they say back, that's when you're gonna be able to attack a little bit more. I might even say something along the lines of, hey, so, so happy to know that you have hiring under control. Most clients don't say that, that's amazing. Do you have any tips or feedback as to why you think why you think you have hiring under control? I would love to share that with my clients. So in that sentence and questions, you're literally saying one that you have clients, even if you don't, right? That's important. But you're also trying to be like, hey, 
kudos. You've got, you did it right. Like that's not normal. Congratulations. So you're giving them, you're pumping them up. And then you're also asking like, what's the trick? Now that might not always make business for you in this moment, but to get any kind of tips or tricks for you to have in the future or with your current clients is like massive. The more data you have as a recruiter, the better, even if you're at the infant stage of your career or your biz dev. Um, So that just asking those questions back and forth, you're that person on the other side, you're building a relationship with, you're building your rapport, which is really important. And you're not just that transactional recruiter. It's crucial. Okay. So as you're also going through other common objections, you are going to clarify what their problem is. So this really comes for like, if you're on the call with them, or it still could be via email and you're just going to say, okay, so what I heard was, this is, this is why you're okay. Or what I heard was budgets were cut. So well, what about backfilling some positions? So remember, you got to get creative and you got to think that there's other ways that for you to make money. Maybe they're not hiring new positions, but did you ever think, are they backfilling any positions? That's another thing. Um, Another great way that you can combat objections in recruiting is sharing testimonials. Explain different scenarios like, hey, you know what? I had a client that did X, Y, Z, or hey, my client filled these roles faster with me. Here's again, it's data. Evidence is crucial. And that's how you can really build trust pretty quickly. Okay. Um, And then really, let's not forget, I'm going to go back to it. I talked about it a little bit uh, earlier on, but being persistent. A lot of people will stop at the no. So how do you keep going? Where do you find value? So you're going to look to see, hey, this person got back to me, which means they took that, which means they'll get back to me again. So how am I perhaps going to make money off of that interaction? Are they looking? Do they know someone that needs help with hiring? Um, You're going to see kind of like the little breadcrumbs, the little mini breadcrumbs. Um, But really, you're going to also ask for the sale. You're going to say, look, I'm a contingency recruiter, which means I don't get paid unless I give you what you want and what you need. I'm results driven. So I don't think that there's any harm in me sending you this resume who I think would be a really great fit for your organization. I'm going to do that. Let me know if you feel the same way. I didn't ask for permission. I just told them what they're doing. So what the reason why I think I have been pretty successful in this industry is because I ask for forgiveness, not permission. That's crucial. Um, I'll tell a really quick story and then I'll let you go and let you get back to your, you know, getting grabbing those clients. But uh, someone the other day sent me a LinkedIn message, which by the way, When you subscribe, when you comment, when you send me messages, it just fuels my fire and I get really excited to do these videos every week. Um, So please keep doing it and thank you. But this person sends me a a message and says, hey, do you mind if I ask you a question? Don't do that, don't do that. Okay, there's so many things wrong with that. Um, The do, do do I mind? First of all, that's so passive. That just shows me that this person has not a sales bone, recruiter bone DNA in their body. Okay. So first things first, I already know they're very, very great. And why ask me? I mean, that literally was asking me a question already. So why not just be aggressive um, and ask me the question? And actually, that's not even being aggressive. That's just being a human being. Like just you have a question for me, ask it. Do I always get back? Hopefully. (laughs) Sometimes it takes me a while. I do get a lot of messages, but I will get back. Um, But also, again, on the other side, what we just learned is you have to be persistent. But if you want something, ask for it. Go after it. Demand it. You know, I said two words in here that aggression and demand, which normally feels like a, a negative, but flip them and make them a positive. So then be assertive. Know what you want. Be confident. Change it like that in your mind if those words go, ah. But a lot of the time, those words means you are very successful and you are really good at what you do. So even if you just entered the recruiting world a second ago, it doesn't matter. You've been here before. You've done that. You own this. 
Okay, so I hope that this has helped you overcome some client objections. There's obviously several and there's lots of different ways that we can do this. And really this could probably even be a share screen, you know, be a, uh, just showing what messages to show. So I'll get you there, I'll get there. Uh, but I would love if in the comments below, put some common objections that either you've combated or you need help with. Because remember, as I pay it forward here in the Millionaire Recruiter YouTube, and on the Talent Takeover Unfiltered podcast, all of these things matter. So help pay it forward to our industry as well. And I will see you every Thursday. So don't forget that money is just a vessel to do all the amazing things you want to go do in life. Go live it, have fun, rock recruiting.